This is lesson 7-5, which is factoring x squared plus bx plus c. Our essential question is, how does recognizing patterns in the signs of the terms help you factor polynomials? So the first thing is, how do we factor a trinomial, and how does the factors relate to the multiplying binomials? So what we have done is we have looked at x plus 2 times x plus 3, and we've either used a table or FOIL, so x times x is x squared, x times 3 is 3x, 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 3 is 6. So we get x squared plus 5x plus 6. So now the question is how do we go the opposite way? So there is a relationship between the terms. So in order to factor a trinomial, you're going to find factors of c, so numbers that multiply to your c term, and add to b. So if you can find two numbers that multiply to c and add to b, that is how you will factor. So if we look at the second part, it says, what's the factored form of x squared plus 5x plus 6? So what I do over here, let me write this out, is I'm going to say, okay, what are my factors of 6? So 1 times 6 is a factor are factors, and then 2 times 3 are factors. So when I look at that list, I'm looking which of those factor pairs add to 5. Well, that would have to be 2 and 3. So that means that this would factor to x plus 2 times x plus 3. And if you're ever not sure, this is the nice part about factoring trinomials. If you're not sure, you can always multiply them back out, FOIL them to determine if you end up with the original trinomial, and then you know if you did it right. Okay, so our next example, what is the factored form of x squared minus 11x plus 18? So notice on this one, we need to find factors of 18. So factors of 18, but they need to add to negative 11. So the fact that they're adding to a negative number, but they're multiplying to a positive 18, means that both of them are going to have to be negative. So we could have negative 1 times negative 18. We could have negative 2 times negative 9. We could have negative 3 times negative 6. So those are my factors of 18. And I think, okay, which pair will add up to negative 11? that would be negative 2 and negative 9. So I would write this as x minus 2 times x minus 9. And again, if I want to check my work, I would FOIL it back out and hope that it equals my original problem. And if it does, then I verified that I did it correctly. Okay, example 3. What is the factored form of x squared plus 5x minus 6? This is going to look like example 1, but it's a little different with the signs. So this time, I need to find factors of negative 6. Oops, factors <laughs> of negative 6. So I have to think of all the different factors that could multiply to negative 6. So I could think of negative 1 times 6 but also negative 6 times 1, and negative 2 times 3, but also negative 3 times 2. So when they're multiplying to a negative number, I know that one of them needs to be negative. Okay, And so now that I have my list here, I need to find which of those pairs will add to a positive 5. So I want them to add to a positive 5, so that would have to be this pair right here because negative 1 plus 6 equals positive 5. So I'm going to write this as x x minus 1 times x plus 6. Now just because I haven't mentioned this yet, it's okay to write it as x plus 6 times x minus 1. The order on this doesn't matter. So as long as you have both of those numbers, you could write it either way. Okay, so our last example is a real life problem. So it says Benjamin is designing a new house. The bedroom closet will have one wall 
that contains a closet system using three different sized storage units. The number and the amount of wall space needed for each of the three types of storage is shown. What are the dimensions of the largest amount of wall space that will be needed? Okay, so you can see here that we have a storage unit that's x by x, so that would have an area of x squared, and there is one of those storage units needed, so we're going to write x squared. Then you'll notice over here that we have a storage unit that's 1 by x, which means it would be 1x would be my area, and there are 12 of them needed. So that's going to be plus 12x. And then finally here we have a 1 by 1, which means the area is 1, but we need 35 of them. So be plus 35. So now I have an expression, I have a trinomial, and I want to know what are the dimensions of the largest amount of wall space that will be needed. So we want to find what's this dimension by this dimension. So we can do that by factoring. So I'm going to say, okay, what are my factors of 35? Well, I know 1 and 35. I also know 5 times 7. And 5 times 7, 5 plus 7 equals 12. So those are the ones I want to use. So the dimensions of the wall would be x plus 5 by x plus 7. So whatever x is, those would be my dimensions of the wall. So for instance, if x equaled 10, then my wall, um, my wall would need to be 15 feet by 17 feet. Okay, so that is factoring trinomials. Let me know if you